So today we're talking about what's looking hot and what's not ahead of reporting season. But first up, before we get into the meaty stuff, what should investors be looking out for? I think they want consistency in the results coming out. Nobody wants surprises, especially on the downside. Nobody likes to hear impairment charges, you know, capital raising, because it's going to dilute value. So and if it's business as usual, it'll be good for the investors. And for those who are new to investing, what are the key things or the key financial lines in the results that they should be looking for? I think for banks and insurers, you know, people look at the margins. I think that's, that's very important because you know, it measures competition as well and how well these companies, banks or insurers, are pricing their products and services. So if margins are held steady or if they go up, you know, it's good for the company as a whole. And that leads me perfectly to my next question. For banks, regional banks as well, and insurers, what other key things should we be watching out for? I think we'll start with the insurers. You know, bushfires and hailstorms has been, have been the norm this time around. So, you know, people have been looking forward to, you know, listening about claims and how the insurers are going to manage them. And I think so far the insurers have been pretty good in updating the market. You know, they've been transparent, they've been forthcoming. And some of them actually have very good reinsurance arrangements. So I think you know, that's pretty much taken care of at this stage. And in terms of the big four banks, we've seen Westpac in the headlines yet again. So what, what's, what's it looking like for Westpac? I think they've got a, you know, quite a few headwinds coming their way. The first one is, is the Austrac penalty. You know, the market doesn't know what the number will be, but I think estimates are it's actually between a billion to a billion, well, to 1.2 billion. So that's a big hit if they get that kind of penalty. And also there's a class action that's brewing. Uh, you know, the outcome is very uncertain. So the good thing for Westpac is they raised capital uh, late last year. So hopefully that, that should be enough for them to offset any penalties in, in the horizon. But you know, it, it is going to be uncertain for them over the next six, 12 months. And speaking of Westpac, let's throw the other big three into the mix. Who's your top pick? I think, you know, I've got holes on all my major banks, but my top pick will definitely have to be Combank at this stage. The, the reason is that, you know, they, they were first out in terms of the penalties and providing for remediation costs. So, you know, they've, they've done it longer than the other major banks. So. My reasoning is that they'll have less to, to go on uh, going forward and they've covered a lot of ground already. So it is a good time for them to actually uh, refresh the whole business. And you know, you've, you've read about them uh, you know, investing in Klarna and f other fintechs and I think it's, it's the right time for them to actually step out again you know, relative to the other major banks. So time to look forward to a new strategy. And what about dividends and earnings forecasts? I think dividends will be probably unchanged for the major banks. Um, I think the, the main reason is that you, you never know what remediation cost will be, but the good thing is for Combank especially and for ANZ, uh, they have surplus capital, which means at least they can maintain dividends. I'm not, not so sure about NAB or Westpac. Um, NAB, a lot of people are pointing to the fact that they may need to raise capital, so dividends uh, will be uncertain for NAB at this time. And outside of the big four banks, we've got regionals and other banks and insurers as well. Top picks among those? Um, top picks, you know, I, I'll settle for this uh, small regional bank up in Bundaberg. It's called Oswald Bank. It's the only bank that actually has a profit upgrade last year. <coughs> and it, it's a very focused bank uh, that, you know, they have guided to, you know, improving margins, which is pretty rare for a bank nowadays. So I think, you know, this is the one to watch out for. Nice. And your pecking order, everyone loves hearing about that. So a pecking order for the majors would be Combank, followed by ANZ, then NAB and Westpac. And then for the regionals, I'd probably, I'll, I'll have Oswald Bank on top, followed by Bendigo and then Bank of Queensland. Any parting words? Um, I, I think the banks, you know, pe people have actually... Uh, Factored in a lot of bad news for the banks, and I think that the worst could be over. So, you know, let, let's see what, what happens over the next few weeks. But I think it's fair to say the banks are coming off from a low base, so the, the level of surprises won't be as big. So, that's good for the banks. 
Well, thank you so much for your insights. It's always a pleasure. T.S. Lim, Head of Bell Potter Research, thank you so much. My pleasure as well, Jess. Thank you.